Hi, it's Jennifer LeClaire. You probably know me from books like The Heart of the Prophet or A Prophet's Heart or my latest, The Making of a Prophet. I want to talk to you today about prophetic issues. I want to talk to you today about what to do with a personal prophecy that hasn't come to pass, but maybe you even forgot about that personal prophecy. I want to talk to you about keeping your prophetic words in mind. Keeping your prophetic words in mind. You can read an article on the same topic uh, on Charisma Magazine or on my website, and the URL is below, or you can click through the article uh, in the YouTube uh, description comments. You'll see a link to the article there. But I want to talk to you about this today because it's really, really important. You know, we get prophecies and sometimes, you know, we just forget about them. And, you know, we have a responsibility when we receive a prophetic word. We have a part to play in bringing it to pass. And if we just dismiss a true prophecy, then we're, we're, we're doing ourselves a discredit. We're not working with God. We're not doing our part. And as you'll often hear me say, God can't do our part and we can't do his part, but he won't do our part. So we have a part to play and God has a part to play as most prophecy is conditional. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever received, has someone ever spoken over you, or has God even ever said to you a prophetic word that it just didn't make any sense at all to you? I mean, to your natural mind, it was just like, um, no way. All right, maybe it didn't even bear witness to your spirit. Maybe you just weren't in a position at all to receive it. Maybe you were going through something and it just didn't seem possible. Perhaps the prophetic promise was so exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think that you just dismissed it as not true uh, without even praying about it. I mean, you know, it happens. If that's happened, listen, you can go back. I believe in judging prophecy, and if you followed my ministry for any length of time, you'll know that I believe firmly in judging the prophetic word. It's not uh, wise to just receive anything and everything that anybody and everybody says to you. I receive a lot of really goofy prophecies, people posting stuff on Facebook I don't even know, telling me I need to stop watching TV when I don't even watch TV. So, you know, it, there, there's issues there and you just sort of, you dismiss those. Yeah, if it's, if it's not of God and you know it's not of God, you just miss it. You know, but I wrote this book called Did the Spirit of God Say That? And and, and it's about judging prophecy. And if you've read that book, you'll know that, you know, judging prophecy is not always an exact science. You, you can't really, you know, check down a box and, you know, rule it out one way or another just with your natural mind alone. I mean, yeah, if it violates scripture, toss it out immediately. Don't give it a second thought. And as a matter of fact, if it violates scripture and someone's speaking it over you, break those words in the name of Jesus because you don't want that that uh, potentially demonic or, or witchcraft prayer prophecy uh, over your life. So break those things. But sometimes, you know, sometimes it's it's just something that we need to put it in a drawer for later. So, you know, we need to just sort of keep the saying in mind because, you know, it might ring true many years from now or even many decades from now. Think back to Abraham and Sarah. I mean, Sarah laughed out loud and then she denied it, but she laughed out loud when she heard the Lord uh, prophesying to Abraham that she would bear a son. And that was also the case when Jacob heard Joseph's prophetic dreams. He had a couple of prophetic dreams and Jacob, listen, Jacob actually rebuked Joseph for sharing the dream that his brothers would bow down before him. Now, here's the thing. Those were both wild prophecies. I mean, to think that a woman who was beyond the childbearing years and who had always been barren to begin with would conceive a son in her old age with a man who was also very, very old. I mean, Abraham was, you know, pushing a hundred there. So, you know, that was a wild prophecy, but yet it was true. Same thing with Joseph's brothers bowing down to him. I mean, you know, he was the one of the youngest sons. Why would they bow down to him? It was it was a wild prophecy. But even sometimes some of the wildest prophecies can actually be God's truth. I mean, he says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think, right? And nothing is too hard for God, right? So, you know, we, we have to know that, you know, sometimes these things can be true. So, you know, what do you do? Well, let's, let's look at uh, what, what Jacob did. I love this. We know that despite Jacob's rebuke of Joseph in front of his brothers, 
that he didn't completely dismiss that prophecy. Let me let me uh, read here from scripture. Uh, let me set the scene though. Jacob was uh, Joseph rather was 17 years old and apparently he was a bit of a tattletale because the Bible says in Genesis 7 uh, 37 and 2 that he brought a bad report back about his brothers when they were in the field. So Joseph Joseph's brothers resented him for that, I'm sure. And I mean nobody likes a tattletale, nobody likes a rat. But they also resented him because he was dad's favorite. And, of course, he wore that tunic, that coat of many colors, which proved, you know, dad favored Joseph more than the others. And the reason for that was, was because he was the son of Rebekah, who uh, Jacob really, really loved more than Leah. So Jacob, or Joseph rather, had uh, two prophetic dreams. And in both of these dreams, uh, God showed him that, that his brothers, the 11, would bow down to him. They would bow down to him. So here's uh, the scripture, Genesis 37, uh, verses 10 through 11, says, So he told it, the dreams, to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. But listen, listen, his father kept the matter in mind. So although he, he, he probably rebuked the brother, he, he probably rebuked uh, Joseph to sort of lessen the sting and to sort of water down that offense because obviously it was offensive to his brother. So he was probably just trying to keep the peace in the family and, uh, you know, probably made Joseph feel bad, but he kept the matter in mind. So catch that now. He kept the matter in mind. In other words, he didn't dismiss those prophetic dreams. Jacob, now, he didn't start warring with those prophetic dreams. You know, he didn't start warring with that prophecy so that it would come to pass. He didn't start laboring in prayer over it that it would come to pass. He didn't start praising God for it so that it would come to pass. But he didn't throw it away either. He didn't toss it in the circular file either. He didn't completely dismiss it. So what does this mean for you? What am I saying here? Well, it might be time... I pray about it, but it might be time to dig out some of those old prophetic words out of the drawer. And listen, if you're not keeping record of the prophecies that people are speaking over you or that the Lord is speaking to you, either through that still small voice or through that prophetic dream or vision, then you're making a mistake. You've got to start recording these things. You've got to keep a record. When you receive a personal prophecy, keep a journal or Write it down on a piece of scrap paper, whatever you want to do, but keep a record of it because it could be that the Holy Ghost will stir your remembrance to keep the matter in mind and then you're trying to remember exactly what it was. And of course, the Holy Spirit can repeat it to you. But how much more powerful if you wrote that thing down and you can go and, oh, yeah, and you can reference that and, and then it speaks to you in that hour. See, here's the thing. Unless you can judge a prophetic word to be just completely erroneous, completely false. And many times you can, because like I said, if it violates scripture, it's out of here. If it breeds fear, control, manipulation, you know, if it seeks to control you, if it doesn't exalt Jesus, you can look at all these things in my book, uh, Did the Spirit of God Says That I Offer 27 Guidelines. And of course, you know, really you only need one if it violates scripture, but what if it doesn't violate scripture. It's not an exact science, so I've written this book to sort of help you and give you different examples, practical examples of people who sent me prophecies that were true and that were false and how they judged them and if they were right and very practical hand handbook there for you. But, you know, if you, if you know that it's false, throw it away. But if you don't, save it because it could bring clarity later to your life at a time when you really, really need it. I mean, come on, here's the deal. Some prophecies are like a heads up from God, and, and it may not make any sense to you at the time. I mean, yes, prophecy really should bear witness with our spirit, but sometimes we're just not in a place where we can receive it. We might have at that time some kind of hidden sin in our life that's blocking our fellowship with God. You just never know. It could just be that you're going through a trial and you've got so many voices speaking to you that you know, you're just not receiving. It's possible. All right, so you've got to... Put it in the drawer and keep it because 
when certain events begin to unfold in your life 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years later, that prophecy can then serve as a confirmation to you that you are smack dab in the middle of God's perfect will for your life. So when you first hear that prophecy, you may not be in a place to receive it, but it really could bring assurance and comfort uh, to you later in life and really show how God has been working in your life for years to bring his will to pass. And boy, I tell you what, that is a special revelation and a special feeling when you can look back and you can see that even though this this and this happened and all these bad things happened and even some good things happened that God was working it together for good and that was a revelation that Joseph had but I'm getting ahead of myself now Joseph went through, as you know, horrible trials before the prophetic dreams came to pass. I mean, he was thrown into a, a, a well and left for dead. Uh, but then they decided, well, we're going to sell him to the Ishmaelites. And then he was sold as a slave. And then he was put in prison for something he didn't do. I mean, you know, but it, it was, the, you know, we think we go through trials. I mean, that's hardcore. But when the famine hit Egypt, Joseph was able to save the sons of Israel who later would become the nation of Israel from perishing because he obeyed. He kept the saying in mind too. Now, although his brothers eventually came to realize that the prophecies were true, I mean, eventually they came to know when, when they when they came to, to Joseph. You know the whole story. We're not going to get into it. But eventually they did bow down to Joseph. They didn't know who he was the first time they bowed down to him. They thought he was just second in the command of Pharaoh. But they, they bowed down to him. They were subject to him. They were at his mercy if they wanted food because Joseph was the one in the land that had the authority from Pharaoh to buy and sell food during this time of famine. And if his brothers wanted that food, they had to be, you know, subservient to him. And it turned out, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns in the story. But the bottom line is, is that at the end of the day, condemnation set in with Joseph's brothers. And they were like, oh, my gosh, you know. He's going to repay us evil for the evil that we did to him by selling him to as a slave and, and the rest. But see, Joseph, he saw Romans 8.28, which says God works all things together for the good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Joseph saw Romans 8 and 28 manifesting. He, he looked back. He thought back. I'm sure of it. And, and he could see how God worked it for good. And he told his brothers this. Listen, Genesis 50, 19 through 20. He told his brothers, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? And you know, it's just a little bunny trail right there. None of us are in the place of God, okay? We don't have the right or the authority to hold anything against anybody at any time. Am I in the place of God, he said? But as for you, you meant evil against me, Joseph said. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. So Joseph went before them to make a way to save their lives. And the Lord showed him in two different dreams, way, way, way back there. And eventually everybody saw that it was true. Now, if God can take a tattletale boy who was sold as a slave and imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit and put him up as second only to Pharaoh in the most prosperous nation at the time in the world, then God can do anything. If God can do for Joseph and for the nation of Israel what God has done for Joseph and the nation of Israel, God can do a miracle in your life. He can. He can. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for God. So next time you receive a personal prophecy, whether it's directly from the Lord or, or through a prophet, and, and you know it's not false, judge it. Next time you receive a word and you believe it's true, or, or if you're just not sure, you're not completely sure, do what Jacob did. Keep the matter in mind. Amen? So I want to pray for you before we go. Father, I thank you right now for your spirit. And I ask you, God, to give all those who are listening to the sound of my voice a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Because when they know you, they'll know your voice no matter who it comes from, no matter who it comes through. And I ask you, God, to pour out a discerning spirit on the people that they would not be tricked and fooled and tossed about by every wind of doctrine but they would be rooted firmly and established in Christ knowing him and his love father pour out your spirit over us and help us to walk out your prophetic words over our life help us to walk in your perfect will help us to walk in your written word in Jesus name 
Amen. Well, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm putting out these videos every week now uh, by uh, request of, of many people who really just they want more than the article. So I'm bringing the articles to life that I write every week in these videos. And I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Visit my website. Got tons of stuff on there on prophetic ministry as well as prophetic books. I thank you for listening. I love you guys. Bless you. I'll see you next week.